Welcome back everyone to the Two-Headed Wolf Gaming Channel, last epoch and the final episode from our Sorcerer early game run. And I hope you're ready to see a Sea of Flames, as this might be the most visually appealing build I have done so far in last epoch, and I'm really hoping it's not the last. And we're gonna upgrade it too, so I'm really looking forward to this. At this moment, I haven't made a whole lot of changes to the equipment. I found this idol, which is pretty good for us, 16 mana and 32% increased fire damage over time. That is pretty awesome. Over here I found these boots again, Lessons of Metropolis, increasing our speed and providing us with a bit of dodge. I didn't find better boots, so at this moment this stays. Then I have found this ring, which we've never seen before, Sunrave. 42% chance to ignite on melee hit, not useful for us. 60% increased fire damage over time, plus 14 melee fire damage. Flame Reef hits enemies in an expanding circle around you, and plus A2 Flame Reef mana cost. I don't know exactly what Flame Reef is, I don't remember seeing it with any of the other classes like the Sentinel and the Rogue. I don't know which one will have it, but whenever we get to a point where that skill appears, then we're definitely going to put this ring on. But this one also offers 60% increased fire damage over time. And with that bonus, since I don't have a much better ring, I feel like I should go with this one, right? Let's see, does it change information here? 857, if I throw this in, 1049. Perfect. A nice upgrade there to damage. On the passive side, at this moment, I don't really want to invest on any more in the mage. I would, you know, on one side I would, because there's good bonuses there, but I want to take a look at Sorcerer and expand in this direction. Now let's see over here, we could get a bit more mana regeneration and I would be happy with that to be honest. I'm going to throw another point here just to increase that critical strike chance per intelligence. Make sure we're doing a lot of damage and we've unlocked a new series of bonuses here. Pyromancer increases fire damage and fire skill ignite chance increased by 3% per point. And the rest do the same but with lightning and ice. So we're gonna go with more fire damage then. That's good enough, let's throw another point here in mana, we've unlocked Ice Barrage, open a reef that repeatedly shoots a barrage of ice shards in the target's direction for 5 seconds, cool, we also have the static orb here, casts an orb in a target direction that deals lightning damage and pulls enemies that it hits towards it as it travels. At the target location it explodes, dealing lightning damage to enemies surrounding it and also strikes up to 5 enemies further out. The further it travels, the higher the damage and the area of effect of the explosion up to 100%. What a complex skill to have. Definitely something to try out in the future, it's crazy enough to where I feel like, I feel very curious to see how it works. And we could get Whirling Snow, we're not doing any ice damage though. Lost Knowledge, you gain ward based on your current mana, when you use a skill that costs at least 40 mana. You know what, I feel like this one can work. We're gonna go a bit more with mana regeneration here. And then a bit more fire damage, we've unlocked the final set of skills here, which we'll probably reach. Lava Mancer, increasing fire penetration and fire damage leech. I'm guessing we're absorbing as health, right? It doesn't say, but yes, it's pretty much healing depending on fire damage. And we have the same over here with ice and lightning. But well, we're gonna go with the fire one. We're investing two points there. And that's about it. If we were to take a look at those skills, so we have the static orb here. It goes wherever you throw the mouse interesting a bit hard to target because when you're moving around trying to avoid damage if you have to stop and put your mouse far far away um it can be finicky right you have to be careful and ice barrage over here okay and it's it's not a channeling attack Oh, and it moves with us. Well, this is actually quite, quite cool. Okay, there's enough uniqueness to the Sorcerer class to consider it really good. It, it is unique. There's creativity there, definitely. 
I like what they've done here. Now let's take a look at fireballs. I want to do a bit more of this. Let's see, spreading flames applied by fireballs has additional fire penetration, 40% per point. We're going to do at least 40% there. We can get some fire resistant shred chant. Yeah, 25 per point. I do like that. Burning wounds. Fireball hits have more critical strike chance against ignited enemy. Another 25%. You know what? We're, let's reduce or shred some of the fire resistance. I am going to invest a point here in burning wounds as well. Fireballs now seek nearby targets. I like that as well. Many modifiers here which are impressive. Hitting the same enemy with several fireballs trigger flame bursts around them. Fireballs required for flame bursts 5. Okay, so it's an explosion. And we can reduce it to 3. There's so much good stuff here. We can get a bunch. If we invest a lot of cast speed, we can get Unchained Fire. Fireball has increased cast speed and deals more damage for extra projectiles. But no longer fires extra projectiles. Ah, for each extra projectile we get more damage, but we fire only one, a single one. Okay, sure. We could get even more extra projectiles here. At a slower cast speed, we could get two more projectiles. And then Cree Chance turns this to Stun Chance times 20. Wow. Yeah, definitely crazy as far as what you could do there. Uh, let's invest all the, all the points needed here to also get knockback. I haven't really used it for knockback, but maybe it's going to come in handy. Let's see, over here. Critical multiplier. I'm not sure that that is exactly what I want. I'll invest another point over here. Let's increase the fall speed by a bit also. And maybe some mana recovery. I think some mana recovery might be very useful. Speed and range increased by 40% for shrapnel. Shrapnel damage, shrapnel pierce. Wow, difficult decisions, right? Where do we go? I guess a bit more efficient here. We'll get 100% chance to increase shrapnel. We'll do a bit more damage and there we go. Now we're doing 700. And let's try this out. So, this is how I've been playing lately. Just moving around, throwing fireballs, setting them on fire, and then moving away. And you can see how far the fire spreads. Like, many times I don't even have to shoot again. Just because of how efficient that attack is. And because of all... I'm guessing because of all the scale-ups that we have with the unique items equip it's definitely going really well probably the first two multipliers which really do the biggest amount of damage is what we've seen with the scepter right the scepter offered us spreading flames on hit that's the first thing which really gave us a lot of power and then this one which increases elemental damage by 30 percent and critical strike chance by another 30 percent those two put together really strong, really impressive. I have space to throw something else in here, but I don't know if there's anything that useful. Maybe some more retention and cold resistance. And or I could throw this in with a bit of stun resistance and some necrotic damage resistance. Overall, let's see, our secondary quest is to the left. Yeah, so once we're setting enemies on fire, we don't really need to sit around. We can just move on and they will burn out. Most of the time, the enemies just die. Like, I don't have to worry about it at all. And that has been really nice. And when you have, like, these huge crowds, you will see them setting themselves on fire and you don't have to worry about it at all. Certain enemies are more resistant to it, and whenever I find an enemy which is hard to kill, I just drop one of these meteors, and it's pretty much done. And I feel like this might be the most powerful build or powerful combination that I found in this game, you know, for as much as I have played it. 
where I have these fireballs, which set enemies on fire, do damage over time, spread to nearby enemies, basically giving me enough power to where I don't have to sit still and I'm hearing crowds without a worry in the world. And the second thing is, whenever I encounter a tougher enemy, dropping those meteors is really good, really powerful. This shield is also really good, I'm getting some warding from it, I'm also doing fire damage with the fire aura. Overall, a crazy idea. And I found out how you use this thing as all, uh, this thing as well. It said that after channeling for exactly one second you gain a burst of 40 mana and ward. That's something which you gain automatically. You don't have to time it at one second so that you get that bonus. So for example, if I drop a bunch of these meteors, right? When I go now in focus, you will see that I get at that burst of regeneration after one second. That is the most efficient thing you can do. You can keep the mouse buttons pressed down in order to do or to gain more mana regeneration, but you don't really need to do that. Okay. Let's see, what do we want to throw in here? The Volcanic Orb, I haven't really used it. We're either doing Teleport, or we are going to be doing... I'm not really scaling a lot of Ice Barrage, but I, I really want to see what it has to offer. Let's see. Each Ice Shard released by Ice Barrage has a higher chance of freezing enemies in the previous shard. Okay, so higher chances to freeze. Deal more call damage and have increased crit. The barrage lasts longer. Ice barrage hits against the bosses and rare enemies greatly increase the fire rate to the remaining hits. The effect stacks up to, to a cap. Okay, so we can get about a hundred percent increase in both fire rate against rare enemies and twenty percent against bosses. <laughs> that is amazing. Okay, no more homing for these ice shards, but we get a bit more damage. Chance to pierce, frostbite, all that. Less projectiles, but more damage. Ice burst on activation, so it instantly fires five shards in a code. You can also create a shield for yourself. Okay. I think it's interesting. I mean, this ability is also really powerful from the start, so I don't think you really need to invest in anything else. Let's see over here. Now, if I was to go with Volcanic Orb, do we have any kind of automatic? No, of course we don't. Orb damage, a bit more speed, shrapnel damage, you can get extra projectiles. This cooldown, final shrapnel disabled, but we're getting hit damage. Creates explosions. Creates fire glyph. Casting volcanic orb creates a fire glyph that at your feet, which explodes after 1.3 seconds, creating a fire nova. Okay. Creates an explosion, or you could go and turn it into ice. It's something that we might want to do in the future. But I don't see the, the reason why I would use it. If I was to use, look at teleport. What do we have with fire? Fire resistance, lightning resistance and stun avoidance. Increase elemental damage. So you deal increased elemental damage if you cast. If you have cast teleport recently. Teleport cast elemental nova. Teleport cast elemental where you depart. This node does not work in ele if elemental nova has a cooldown. Okay. I feel like this might be something I want to do with a warrior with the melee class. If fireblade or spellblade is a warrior, then maybe investing in armor cold and something else might be good for tomorrow, right? The novas. I said that I'm going to use the Novas. 
So that is really something that we can go into. Then what's left is this. We're just gonna go with the focus. We're gonna get a bit more mana regeneration. Increase health regeneration. Sure, I could do a bit of that. Focus grants a chance to ignite nearby enemies each second while channeled and causes you to take less damage from ignited enemies. Okay, more fire damage. Shocks, chills, and ignites inflicted by focus have longer duration. Healing effectiveness. I'll definitely go here. Let's get a 100% chance to ignite enemies. We could get a bit of mana overcharge there. Could get some wards. Haste after channeling could also be great. Increase mana regeneration per missing mana. Okay, a lot of crazy stuff over here. Let's get a bit more armor. Well, not for now. Okay, so I do this. We'll drop a bunch of meteors. Put up a shield as well. Make sure we're burning our enemies while at the same time stay protected. Probably ward retention would be one of those things which we should scale up in time. Uh, you can see now that I am taking a lot of damage and that is because of poison stacks. I haven't found the way in which I could clean, cleanse the ailments with this build. But once again, it's one of those things where uh, we are very weak. And it feels like one of those big, uh, big challenges that you have to figure out as you are playing through this game. Like whenever you get to these areas, poison is a killer. What do we have here? Fireball. Plus one to fireball. Let's see. Maybe we replace the armor that we have on us now. I'm not really removing equipment from different characters, but... Meaning at the end of a run, but if I do replace them midway through, then I can still use it with other characters. That's sort of a rule I've made myself. Of course, I'm going to change it because I want to keep this ring for whenever Flame Reeve appears. Weltering Huge Arcane Idol of Sparks. 20% chance to ignite with fire skills and plus 4 melee lightning damage. Well... I want the Ignite, I don't have where to put it without removing this, and I want the extra damage there as well, I guess when we unlock more idle space. This armor gives us more armor, some void resistance, 41 fire resistance, pretty good, a bit of spell damage and yeah, okay, it's nothing that great. I thought that we would get a bit of fire damage to replace it, but that's not the case. Let's see, let's drop a bunch of meteors over here, make sure we're doing a lot of damage, throw that shield on. There it is. How quickly we melted that boss. Let's see, buried in the slums. She told me of the Emerald Nagasa. They were the same. Absolute carnage. Let's love it. I mean, I, I wouldn't want anything else. And bec because I'm just using, I mean, I'm just using a basic fireball. Like, think about that. I don't remember the last time I've had so much fun using fireball as a skill. I remember playing with a fire build in Diablo, in Diablo 2. I don't remember e ever being interested in getting a fireball in Diablo 4. 
Half of Exile has a fireball skill that you start with or that you can get very early on when using, I believe, the Witch, right? And it's something that I want to try to play with. It's like I've never done it. I've done it only a bit for until I leveled up and picked another skill, one that I actually wanted to make a build with. But I've never played with a fireball other than just throwing some multiple projectiles on it. But with that in mind, I don't feel like the fireball in Path of Exile was that good, right? Or satisfying. And now I am thinking that I want to make a build like that. I will want to get back to Path of Exile and as I said, this series, one of the reasons this series has started like this and I want to try out all of these classes rather than getting to the end game is because I want to experience them all before I fully commit a lot of hours into leveling up one of them. In Path of Exile, in 3000 hours, I haven't... I haven't played all the Ascendancies and there's definitely many builds which... or potential builds which I've never tried because I know they're not great especially in comparison to others. And because of that, I want to have a few runs like this one, like we've done here with this series, or like we're doing here with this series, where I'm going to go for each ascendancy, and I want to go for skills which are a bit stupid and I'm trying to put them together. Basically, those starting skills that you always start with, where people rarely stay with them at this point. I want to try them out. I want to play with them, and I want to... I don't care for them to be endgame builds. I don't want them to defeat Shaper or anything like that. I just want to see what it would happen or how much can I scale it, how powerful can I make them, how many unique items can I throw in that will make them cool to use. And we all know that, generally speaking, most of the uniques are not great in Path of Exile. But it still feels fun to try it. So we're gonna go with this idea in the future as well, but this game has pretty much nailed Fireball. From burning enemies and... But what I love the most about the way this fire spread works is that it, it's not an AoE. I gen we've seen Fireballs before, maybe in an MMO or something like that, where it explodes and it leaves an area of effect and that's about it, right? Or it leaves burning ground and enemies have to walk on top of it. But in this game, they take the fire damage, they, the fire damage just spreads. It goes from one enemy to the other and comes back as well. So if one of the enemies loses the ignite chance, but he has a big crowd around it, it's going to take even more damage, even more ignite. And that is absolutely perfect. I mean, it's perfect. You don't need anything else for this skill. And if they can come up with something else, <laughs> good for them. What do we want to invest in next? We could get a bit more critical strikes by going this way. We could go more fire damage and ignite. And I feel like more fire damage and ignite is the right way to go. We've unlocked now a new set of skills. And this is fire, this is ice, this is... You have an increased critical... You have increased chance to critical strike with spells. This effect is doubled for lightning skills. Okay, so it is tied to lightning. Inferno. Increase elemental damage over time by 8%. Increase ignite duration by 2% per point. Okay. I think we can just do this and move forward. And the enemies will just burn. Look at that. I don't even need to, to do more than one attack in order to win this. This is what I was looking for when I played the rogues. Whenever I played and I tried to make a poison build and a bleed build, this is what I was really looking for as an experience. But I guess I didn't find out the right recipe to scale up that damage and make it feel like this. But the fire damage over time over here is super impressive, super strong. Look at this. I am taking away 3% of the enemy's health here with each hit. 
39% potion health converted to ward, 43% increased cold damage, and 4 minions as well. Okay, we'll stash that up. At this point, I know that this is going to be very useful, like that extra ice damage is going to be useful tomorrow when we're playing the Spellblade. I am focused on Disintegration, the what Fire and Lightning Beam. That is going to be something that I will keep for, for the final day, for whatever the Rune Master has to offer, because I am curious. I am curious if anything from the Rune Master works with that channeled skill. Because whenever I've seen it, whenever it came out, I've seen some combos. But they didn't... I don't remember seeing them with channeled skills. And at the end of the day, I didn't pay much attention either, but... If I don't remember seeing it, it's probably true, right? Okay, over here, what are we going to do? Let's get a bit of extra damage over time with elements and increase burning duration or ignite duration. We've reached a few more points here. And what do we want to do? I guess a bit more fire damage, probably. Or a bit more mana regeneration. Let's do mana regeneration because that's its main purpose. Yeah, I'll do this. And I don't know what I'll do with the other point, but for now this should be good enough. Yeah, I mean look how much that enemy burned out before we even met it. It had less than a quarter of its health. Come on, let's do this. Haven't thrown a meteor in a while, but we are here now. And by the looks of it, these enemies are resistant to fire, and we're still doing this much damage to them. Nice. Now the recovery is really good. Look at that. What you'd like to see. And I guess this is pretty much the end of it. I mean, we're moving on now. I'm getting into the city and then we're moving on to the next area. I feel like it's a good moment to put a break in this. I've seen everything I wanted to see from this class. And I hope that you did too. Is a mage and a sorcerer cool? Yes. Yes. I definitely believe so. There's really no other way to put it than this is very impressive. I like what they've done with it, and you have to try it out. This is another one of those classes which people should try out. If I had to make a list, so far I would say play Sorcerer, play the Falcon Master, that's the Falconeer, that is another class which you definitely should try, and what else? Probably the Paladin, but I might be a bit too biased for the Paladin. That was the first class I played. It felt super powered. I don't know exactly from the Sentinel. I feel like yes. the Sentinels have to offer so much more than I have managed to show. Still, Falconer and the Sorcerer, try it out. You'll not be disappointed. You don't like fire damage go with ice barrage that looked amazing as well as far as lightning goes this static orb did not impress me at all maybe this black hole or anything you get from arcane ascendance rather than going with this focus 
might be might be making it worth to play even for the lightning attack but that's gonna have to be it hope you have enjoyed it if you did do consider leaving a like as it does help me help the channel grow if you have any kind of feedback thoughts things like that leave them down in the comments below i'd be curious to hear your thoughts on the game and until next time i wish you all to have a wonderful day